Buried deep in the petrous part of the temporal bone lies the hearing organ, the cochlea. Its central axis is horizontally oriented in relation to the axis of the skull. The shell-shaped part of the internal ear, the cochlea lies anteromedial to the semicircular canals and vestibule. About 35 millimeters in length when straightened, the human cochlea spirals two and a half times around its central bony modulus, starting with a wide basal coil and tapering to a tighter apical coil. A bony shelf called the osseous spiral lamina coils around the modulus like the threads of a corkscrew, projecting outwards towards the outer wall of the cochlea. The bone of the osseous spiral lamina, like that of the modulus, is porous, allowing nerve fibers and blood vessels to travel within. The spiral modular artery and vein travel in the modulus and follow the spiral of the cochlea. Arterioles branch off from the spiral modular artery, forming capillary beds in the osseous spiral lamina. Radiating arterioles extend laterally within the bony partition to form a capillary bed in the lateral wall of the cochlea. Radiating venules, which empty into the spiral medullar vein, drain these capillary beds. The cochlea consists of the membranous labyrinth, or scala media, suspended from the osseous spiral lamina within the bony labyrinth. The scala media divides the bony labyrinth into two fluid-filled compartments, the apical scala vestibuli and basal scala tympani. The scala media contains the organ of cordy, which is responsible for transmitting sound impulses to fibers of the cochlear nerve. Enclosing its own unique fluid called endolymph, the scala media consists of a roof called Reisner's membrane, a lateral wall, in a floor called the basilar membrane. The basilar membrane supports the sensory structure of the cochlea, the organ of cordy, which consists of sensory cells, support cells, and the gelatinous tectorial membrane. The apical surface of the hair cells and their support cells fit tightly together, forming the reticular lamina. The inner hair cells are closer to the modulus and line up in a single, continuous row following the spiral of the cochlea. The stereocilia on their apical surface form an almost continuous wall. Located further from the modulus, the outer hair cells outnumber the inner hair cells 4 to 1. Their stereocilia are arranged in a V or W formation. Surrounding the hair cells, a variety of cells such as inner and outer pillar cells and phalangeal cells offer structural support. The pillar cells also form the walls of the tunnel of cordy. Inner hair cells receive sensory nerve fibers from the cochlear nerve. Some sensory nerve fibers cross the floor of the tunnel of cordy and contact 6 to 100 outer hair cells, usually in the same row. However, outer hair cells primarily receive motor nerve fibers which cross the tunnel of cordy at the level and synapse with the base of an outer hair cell. This arrangement of the components of the organ of cordy changes from the base of the cochlea to the apex. At the base of the cochlea, where higher frequencies of sound are sensed, there are three rows of outer hair cells. This increases to four or five rows at the apex, where lower frequencies are sensed. Cell and stereocilia length also increases at the apex, causing a more severe angle in the apical surface of the organ of cordy. From its interior composition to its outer spiral shape, the design of the cochlea accounts for the ability of the human ear to distinguish between many different frequencies and provides us with the gift of hearing.